life easier. So test outline first. Um, I mean, this is very basic because there's not a whole lot of different stuff going on. There's 17 multiple choice questions. Most of those are about um, trig identities. We'll recap those in a minute. Then there's 21 inverse trig questions that are not multiple choice. Not multiple choice. So things like inverse cosine of negative 1 half. Inverse cosine of negative 1 half. So my unit circle experts. I would draw a picture, like some of you are kind of drawing it in the air. Cosine's negative over there, on the left. Uh, it's going to be 2 pi over 3. It's 1 half, so I know it's the steep angle. So that's 2 pi over 3. So that kind of question. Uh, also, some of those um, composite questions. Uh, fancy word for like <coughs> two questions in one. Um, so let's do the inverse sine. I'm making these up, so... Who knows if this is going to work very well. Inverse sine of the cosine of 0. Yeah, that one will work. Yeah. So really, that's just two unit circle questions buried in one, one thing. What's the cosine of 0? 1. Because cosine of inverse, no, cosine of 0 is 1. Draw a picture right over there. <clears throat> the next question, though, is inverse sine of 1. So what, what angle, where is the sine equal to 1? Yeah, up there. And up there would be pi over 2. So questions like that. Um, obviously, we can throw in some tangents and secants and negatives. So you get all sorts of things going on. Um, those take a little bit longer, so I didn't want to do one of those right here. And then four problems that say show, right? Because we're avoiding the, the P word. Verify is another way to say it. <clears throat> and if you, if you aren't scared, uh, that's my scary handwriting. Is that pretty good for scary handwriting? I got to say, that's, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> so four of those. That's Again, so this is not the geometry proof where you put the reasons, you know, the statement and the reason. This is just kind of do the steps. It's giving you a problem where you know the answer. And so in some ways, the proofs are easier than these multiple choice because the multiple choice you're picking from the four answers. And on the proofs, you know the answer. You just got to show the steps to get there. So we're joking around about the scariness of the proofs, I hope. I hope that's a joke for you. <coughs> I mean, it was. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a joke at the beginning. All right, let's do the unit in five minutes. OK, the entire unit in five minutes. Let's see if I can do this. The video's at 349 right now. We'll see if I can pull this off. First thing we did was trig identities. Um, so a bunch of those you already know. I don't feel like I should write them down. Tangent equals sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. All of those. So those are old ones. You knew those. The new ones, well, I guess there was really only, well, depends on how you count. I say there's one new one that sort of leads to two others. But there were three. You're right. But the one you have to memorize is sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. How do you get the other two if you don't memorize them? So if I divide by sine squared, that would be 1 plus cosine over sine is cotangent. 1 over sine is cosecant. <clears throat> and then how do I get the other one? Divide by cosine squared. And again, some people will write more of this out. Other people, this is what I see a lot on the on this test. 
as soon as I hand out the test, you're gonna, I'm gonna see this on a lot of tests. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. You got that memorized, and then you know how to get the other two. Sine over cosine is tangent squared. Cosine over cosine is one, and one over cosine is secant. And you write them down at the beginning, and then you don't have to think about them every time, right? You you can just look at them. Um, you need to be able to manipulate them algebraically. Um, that's sort of what's tested in multiple choice. So that means that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. All manner of rearranging them. But those aren't different, right? That's not a different equation, right? That's the same equation rearranged. And you could rearrange them a whole bunch of different ways. So that's why we don't write them all out. So know, really just know the first one. Know how to get the next two and know some algebra to, to be able to rearrange things. Um, proof tricks. Um, again, this is a list of possible things to do. This isn't like, this is not the steps you follow. This is things you might try. Um, so look for the Pythagorean identities. That's those, the squared ones, because it comes from a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's one, one trick to, to look for. Um, you can try to get a common denominator. So that's really more of an algebra step. <clears throat> especially, especially if you've got um, two terms on the left side and you got one term on the right side, well, I don't know what trig you're going to have to do, but eventually you're going to have to get a common denominator to get those two terms to turn into one term. So that's, that's something to look for. Um, you can put everything as sine or cosine. Right, every again, you don't do this all the time because sometimes it makes a mess of things. But if you're absolutely stuck, and sometimes it makes life easy, you can write every trig function as something with sine or cosine, or both. And so if you're <coughs> stuck, you can do that. Again, be careful. Sometimes that makes it worse. If you should have used a Pythagorean identity or get a common denominator, then maybe this isn't the best thing to do. So again, these are all options, things that you might try. Not a list of things that you definitely do, just things to think about. Um, and then there was only one more that I thought of. Uh, multiply top and bottom by a conjugate. Because that usually leads to a Pythagorean identity. Again, I, I don't think you write those down. I'm not even sure you memorize those. You don't use them all. You know, you probably never use all of them on one particular proof. There might be times where you don't use any of them. Um, it's just those are things that have to be in your sort of toolbox of things that you can do um, to make a proof work. And then the second thing was inverse trig. I'm over my five-minute line here, but that's okay. Uh, inverse trig was really about what quadrants am I allowed to, to look at. Um, one set of functions is 1 and 4. One set of functions is 1 and 2. Who's the, who's the, the chief of the 1 and 2 quadrant gang? What's the main function that, that uses 1 and 2? Cosine. You knew what I was trying to ask there. Uh, be careful. It's inverse cosine, not just cosine. And then his friends are secant and cotangent. Everything from 0 to pi. Or your answer will be from 0 to pi. 
quadrants one and four are all the others, inverse sine and his friends, with the warning that if you're in the fourth quadrant, do not go all the way around. Go the quickest way there. So negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Closest to the... Right. Get there as soon as you can. That's going to be... That's going to get you the right answer um, 5 sixths of the time. Cotangent is the one that you have to be careful about. Because cotangent is negative in the second and fourth, yeah. but you've got to use the second quadrant, not the fourth quadrant. So cotangent is the, the exception to the rule. And o then it would only matter if it's an inverse cotangent of a negative number. So in the second quadrant. So if you just remember get there the quickest, easiest way possible, that's probably more than 90% of them. It would only be cotangent where you'd have to be careful. 349 to 11, so that's like seven and a half minutes. The whole unit in seven and a half minutes. Obviously, there's a lot going on there. Part of inverse trig um, was also the, the picture problems. So like inverse sine, nope. The inverse sine, the sine of the inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths. done with the recap video here. In fact, why don't you try that one? Second. Because cosine's inverse cosine's got to be in one or two, but if it's negative, it's going to be in quadrant two. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Yeah, if you're really thinking you could draw it to scale, it doesn't really matter. Oh, actually, I didn't draw it to scale, right? It should be steeper. Okay. <laughs> uh, that 5 should be negative because it's backwards. What's my missing side? 12. And that's what... And then I realized that I didn't draw it to scale, but that's okay. Because all I need now is opposite over hypotenuse, 12 thirteenths.